Hi. Welcome. Welcome to the Doug and Heidi show, or as we Did like to call it. that microphone make it look more official? Hug McGurk. Just on the right. If we combined our names, it would be Dighty or Hug. And I'm thinking that Dighty doesn't sound like duty, like diaper, like Dighty. I don't like that. So we can make it Hug McGurk. Well, and hugs and are, say hugs, hugs are more drugs. gooder anyway. Yeah. Hi. Hugs are good. Hi, Jennifer. Happy belated birthday, you rock Indeed. star. I was just getting dressed and I was found my. Oh, just now. Are you British all of a sudden? <laughs> You guys, just now. Just now. Did you just? Were you just getting dressed and I missed were, it? You were hanging out with your oh, British with friend Steve, all yes. the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, I was getting dressed. And he's this- actually giving me a hard time for because he says I get sensitive about when he makes fun of America. He's like, "Could you get all like?" <laughs> <laughs> so, so, sorry, you're getting dressed. Uh, so I was getting dressed this morning in my Karen Silton 1970s leather blazer. Okay, and then you said it matches my chairs in my office. Here mm-hmm. you can't see because you're sitting in it, but. Yeah, it does. It matches my chairs in my office. And then I was like, do you know what else it matches? Your phone case? My phone case is leather. Hold on a minute. Hey, Sal, what's going on, brother? My leather journals of the same persuasion. And then the piece de resistance. You have a... Is my leather backpack. 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 That if I was a student at Harvard, like I have in my fantasies, I'd be carrying that around with me on campus somewhere. I can't get enough of but, this leather, this color, right? I Am I the it. only one? Brown too. It's nice. Like I, I, I think I got that for you. you did. But that's not the good leather, right? This color leather, like when it gets scratched up, it just looks like somebody sat in it. Or not sat in my coat, I guess. But you know, like you have this old chairs. Like I picture a psychologist's office on a windy hill up in mm. uh, California, driving like a convertible up to his office, and he has these deep leather chairs just sit in and. Hey Ben, your stuff. that's who we met with uh, yesterday. We're right. Well, we're further from you now. I just I saw you get going into the uh, the center this morning as I passed the uh, the coffee place which you did. I dream of genie happening. Yes, it's hot. Thank you. I know you like this half I up, do. half down because it reminds you of what cheerleading. Yes, yes, I did. Because <laughs> you know, back in the day, you know, you back in high school, yeah, that was my my thing. No, it wasn't. Uh, honey. No, was, yeah, they. They, 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 they loved you like secretly. Yes, they had a crush hardly. on you, and they didn't know how to. Hardly. They didn't know how to make it I'm happen. I'm still getting over it. Oh, baby! But Just you scored a cheerleader now. now. I was a cheerleader. I know. I did. Mm-hmm. I can show your routine later. <laughs> yes, you. Okay. Better. All right. We'll play cheerleader. Okay. So, that's gross. Sorry, TMI. Um, Ellie yesterday let the cat out of the bag. <sighs> I was at the grocery store and she said to me, we were in the car driving. She said, mom. And I said, yes, honey. And she said, uh, mom, you know when I tell you, cause she's been getting in trouble at school a lot. Okay. So I was like, Ellie, you've got to start listening to Ms. Taylor. So today, like or yesterday, one of these. Douglas, don't even joke about that. I'm in a hug. Okay. Well, so <laughs> she said, um, mommy, I said, yeah, what's up? And she said, I have something to tell you. And I was like, what's up? And she said, well, you know, I was telling you, I was listening to Ms. Taylor I was lying. And you know, I, I said that when when she did get in trouble that last time. I'm like, I bet every time she said she listened to Miss Taylor, she was actually saying she wasn't. Because we pick her to up Ms. from Taylor. school and she's like, I listened to Miss Taylor today. So she said to me, uh, mommy, I I've been lying. I have not been listening to Miss Taylor. And she's four, right? So I said, Oh honey, why? Why did you lie? And she said, Because I wanted to make you happy. And, you know, we've been practicing this thing. I said, well, honey, you know, what makes me the happiest is when you tell the truth, you know, whether it's good or bad. And last night we were laying in bed and she was, she said to me, I know, look at this. (laughs) She was my, uh, we were laying in bed and she looked over at me and she said, mommy, I love you. And I said, I love you too. And she said, I love you all the time. Even when you're rude, even when you're not (laughs) telling the truth, I love you all the time. I said, Ellie, I love you all the time too. Even when you tell lies, even when I love you. And I love you, but I don't always love what you do sometimes. But I always love you. And so hopefully today we'll see. Yesterday she- when she was saying goodbye to her friend, uh, she told her she loved her, gave her a hug, gave her a kiss, and then had to tell her again after she'd already left, <laughs> open the door again. No, 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 we got to open the door again. And then it's like, I love you. Oh, very cute. So I just thought it was fascinating that the four-year-old put that together, that I'm lying. I was lying about telling you. And now we reward her for lying and then telling the truth about it. 
Yeah. You didn't think that one through, did you? you didn't, I was just in the moment. I was just I living know. in the so moment. So now we're now she's like, okay, cool. I'm gonna lie, I'm and it's a, okay because all I have to do is tell person, you that I lied. Diet Dr Pepper is really it's good. Pretty yummy. And it's going with my '70s vibe that I have going on tonight. It's like no, '70s the, meets '80s. Uh, tab. Oh, tab <laughs> snap. Yeah, that would be. Is it tasty? Um. No, no, I'm it's, it's saccharin. So. It's uh, sweet and low. It's disgusting. Soda with sweet and low. Today, we're going to talk about how to let things go. That's what's not serving you anymore. Things that suck. How to say goodbye to them and let them go. And I have some questions for you. I took notes. Oh, cool. I know. So, um, and oh, by the way, if anyone is, is here, what are some things uh, that you guys are holding on to? Let's, let's make it the I just really yeah function. let's I mean everybody talk to us for yeah. sure but I feel like this is really important because I I'm gonna not throw you under the bus but I'm gonna like out you a little bit in a in a good, <laughs> in a good way <laughs> but like okay here is the um, interesting prepare. is everybody ready we yes. cleanse the space All right. who is ready for some truth truth drops Mm. knowledge bombs and a clearing of all of the bullshit who's ready okay. huh this is what i use to clear the bullshit okay um mostly i use it on myself because i notice sometimes i'm full of my own stuff right are all, i mean aren't we all full the of our plight own of stuff? humanity so basically i'm gonna say it's hard to know don't get nervous because this is like good stuff right you came from Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. all right? Any TR people in the house, okay? What does that mean? That means you have a black belt in state management, right? No. And that's what you teach. That's mm -hmm. what you teach all your people. You do all these workshops and stuff. Great, great, great. To get into state, say yes, right? Do your thing. Make your move, right? So you can get ready to kick some major butt in your life. And state management. Do I need to employ some state management skills right now? No, because okay? state management is extremely valuable. Yes, I mean you know have to talk about it, how important that is. Well, I mean, I mean, it's if you think about it, why do we do anything on like everything that we do? We do to create some sort of experience, some emotion. Everything that we do, um, we're either avoiding feeling pain or going for some sort of pleasure, and then all the rules we have have around that and we're not going to unpack that whole you know yard ball yarn right now but i believe it's the single most important skill set it's the fundamental of existence because life is emotion life is state so you manage your emotions That's doug right. well said mm -hmm. i feel like it was a little bit over here at times, but it for happens. the most part, yeah. I got what you said, right? And that's what we want. We want to get the gist. Right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You're too smart mm -hmm. for me, baby. No, hardly. So that's helpful. Life is emotion and managing your emotion. But here's how you can get stuck, especially for people that are like stuck in this mantra and don't have the balance, is that you can be using state management every day, sucking it up on your way into something that you absolutely can't stand. Okay. Well, I got to manage my state because I got to see that jack off again. Jag off. That's a Pittsburgh term. Can I just have a side note? I went to Pittsburgh for a week. And can I tell you, it was so good. Pittsburgh, Pittsburghese is a whole nother frame of mind where I was walking down the street and how they sell things is very different, right? This guy was selling pierogies. Mm -hmm. and it was like, I got the best pierogies in Pittsburgh and the, and the samples to prove it. You know, and it's just like, it's just and, but like. But you sampled it. Was it yeah, in fact because the I was best like, pierogi I'm, you've ever had? I Pittsburgh. mean, it was definitely the best burger I had that day or even that month, considering I haven't had any in like six months. It so was pretty good. His, uh, his control worked. But he was like, he was like really into his product. And then I was God walking down in Pittsburgh and this guy said, selling pepperoni rolls. And he goes, you can't come to Pittsburgh. You can't come to Pittsburgh without getting a pepperoni roll. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. You gotta be ashamed. You didn't of know yourself. that you were a native. You come to Pittsburgh and ain't gonna get a pepperoni roll. What's the matter with yuns? <laughs> I was like, that's What's the matter with yuns. I don't even eat meat, but I need a pepperoni roll because I felt guilty. Did you? No. So you should be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. How do you show your face right now? I know. 
state management, right? You, you have all the state management. You go in and you're an expert, especially if you've been to Tony Robbins or you're worked for him or you teach this stuff for a living. You can become an expert at state management and you can get really good at talking yourself into doing things that you don't want to do or hyping yourself up into a state that makes you prepared. And we're in a culture that rewards that, right? Put your big girl pants on, suck it up. I don't care how you feel. I care what you do. You know, big girls don't cry. You know, don't be such a baby. You know, all this kind of talk. But life is about balance, right? Life is about finding somewhere, what's called in the Taoist um, term, terminology, is the middle way, which is not so extreme where I'm always pushing myself to suck it up all the time and not always just like being, being a door, door up or not sucking it up, giving up and sucking it up. So where's the middle way? The middle way is understanding when it's valuable to employ state management and when it's, you gotta know when to hold them. Well, that's still know state management. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk. You wanna do it? Know when to run. It's still state management though. Is it? Mm -hmm. How so? Because you're still in a state. So if you gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them, that is a decision on what state you're going to be in the state of it's still i mean that's still a state i know it is but i think you're looking too much into what i'm saying so i know it's valuable to manage my state and talk myself into doing things when i don't need to do in order to do them that's very valuable when i'm working out when i have to suck it up when i have to power through and i have to call upon that state in order to get into the right emotional headspace that i need to do in order to tackle the thing or conquer there's also a very valuable lesson in actually sitting in whatever state i happen to be in and using that as a compass or a barometer not trying to change it not trying to fix it not trying to change Oh. anything at all just sitting in it and getting and saying and qu getting curious about it instead right. of fixing it or changing your state actually getting curious about the state you're in and is it trying to tell you something and then you say do I need to change it or do I need to um, do I need to use this information so exact what same, states, it's the exact same thing. I know but it's semantics at this point with you because you're you're trying to defend a point that I'm not trying to defend. oh I didn't know I, I, I didn't. I'm not trying to put you on a witness stand I'm it just saying felt like. okay all right state management is very valuable everybody's got this right when do you have an emotion that you know it's not time to change that emotion which is state management you can change it for long well, but not in the instance how do you know you have to fold them how do you know personally what emotions are your compass that go, okay, it's time to walk here? What do you experience that you is a tip off to you? A tip off to? That it's time to make some changes, not change your state, make some changes in your life that will ultimately lead to a state change, but change, change your life in that moment, like things you need to do, like feelings that you get that are a signal to you that it's time to go, pack them in, fold them up, bag them, walk away. Anger has always been okay. one for me that I I, uh, I do not function well yeah. in anger. Um, and uh, and then so, well, and the other one is believe it or not, and this is this is the toughest one for people to really kind of navigate is complacency, oh. resignation, because yes, that's a big one. That's where you know, and and by the way, that's sometimes where people confuse being calm and zen like with complacency oh well that's just the, you know the way it is you know instead of going no that's the way it is sucks so i'm and, you know like i got to accept that it sucks and then do something about it and then again that's where you know the the intertwine the 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 whole yarn is with state management is okay what needs to be done and then what is the like what you just shared curiosity is a state so mm -hmm. if you're sitting there and you're saying, okay, I should get curious about how I'm feeling and why I'm feeling that way and all of that, then the conscious choice is what state is going to be the most valuable in this moment and is curiosity. Acceptance is a state as well. And sometimes we do have to accept like, okay, made a mistake, right? I mean, that's because mm -hmm. victimhood is also a state. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. I was out with uh, some, some friends with Brian and, and Chip. Uh, a couple weeks ago and we were talking and I didn't realize we had done a real estate deal and I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the one that we, I know about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. one you know about, no, the, the other ones I haven't told you about. Um, I mean, you were pretty hard on yourself. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, it was, a, uh, it was an expensive learning lesson. 
But it was interesting how the the way I framed it, when I shared it, I basically said I was a victim of this fraud. And Brian was like, victim? Uh, and I'm like, oh, jerk. Because mm. while, yes, I made a decision based on information I had, I made a mistake. Now that's taking personal responsibility. Being a victim are people like I could have stayed stuck in the wall. Oh, you know, poor me and all this, or just go, ah, I made a big mistake. It mm -hmm. was an error. I have to take personal responsibility. Did someone behave a certain way? Did they come after us the way they did through the email and the lying and all of that? And yes, did I fall into the trap? Yes. And I have to take responsibility. I made a mistake and it's okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that the reason I, I want to get off a of state because this okay. is really irrelevant to, to what we're know. teaching today, but the reason I brought it up is because um, <laughs> Let go. for, for me, it, it's very, I lived my life in state management where what I was doing was lying to myself and pretending like I was just um, really good at you know, powering through. And I was, I was really good at certain times in my life of like changing my state and reframing into a positive and, and getting in there and doing it. But what I've learned throughout my practices and the ways that I've tried to like embrace the middle way, right, is that I needed personally to do less um, powering through and reframing and more like sitting in the shit. And going, what do I, do I really feel? Because sometimes I got so good at state management, so good at disassociating from problems in, in some way and just reframing and charging through that I didn't see the value in the pain that was there that was meant for me as a smoke signal to my spirit, my spirit begging my head for change. And I just wasn't willing to be curious enough about it. And so for me, when I feel uninspired, I can have a lot of ways to change that, right? To get into state of inspiration or do whatever I need to do, you know, put the right music on, take a bike ride, do all those things. But I know for me personally, if I go weeks and weeks feeling uninspired, it's not about the state change anymore. It's not about inducing a state of um, getting into a new way to feel more creative or inspired. It's what I'm doing is uninspiring to me. And that's the message. For me, if I'm feeling resentful, if I'm at a place for too long, in a relationship for too long, doing something for too long, and I'm you know, trying to get into gratitude or trying to get into all these other things, and I practice that first, right? And I see, and then I say, oh boy, this resentment is my teacher. What is it trying to teach me? What do I need to learn from it so that I can start to move on? So you have feelings that maybe keep coming up that are reoccurring for you. Resentment was a big one for me. Anger was a big one for you. Stagnation or what is the word you used? Resignation. Resignation. Just like I just don't care. And you could talk yourself into trying to find ways to care. But the reality is like if that keeps like coming up for you, it's time to let it go. Well, and here's a challenge as well. If you're watching this live or overachievers in, yeah. keep hanging on <laughs> well but if, yeah and if you're watching this now or or later um you're very likely on some sort of personal development path and the blessing and curse of that is yes, honey. we can use those skills to keep ourselves stuck because yes. we've got all these we can ninja our way yes. into being like just yeah I, yes. I, I smell what you're laying down yes good keep going that's good stuff so that's the trick is is sitting in it to understand and, and appreciate, are we using our skills to justify, to keep ourselves stuck, to create a, uh, you know, the, the, well, it's just the way it is kind of thing. And then be stuck. Reframe or, your way into hell. Right. And yeah. that's, that's what many of us on this path will, well, by the way, everyone on this path will experience at some point. Right. That's part of the journey. Yes. Like if you're not doing that, you're not actually digging into the work to find yourself. You've created a little bit of a, a personal development mess for yourself. I remember when I first yeah, learned NLP, I was the most annoying person because <laughs> when I was first learning all these skills, what was I doing? I was trying them out and I'm like, hey, and I'm like using all this stuff. And I remember, you know, when I first did the prac is going back like 15 years 
and I would be like, you know, like, oh, let's like imagine a color and let's create. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this stuff totally like unsolicited, unsolicited <laughs> at the wrong time. They're at a funeral, you're right. crying over the casket, and you're like, if that anger, if that sadness had a sound, what sound would it make? Would right. it come from the front or the back? Now, unfortunately, like, I never quite no, did that, saying. but. <laughs> But th that's the point is that when we when we start engaging in this, we start learning strategies. What happens is we get addicted to these strategies because they work. Yeah. And then we find ourselves using them because like, ooh, I don't like the way this feels, right? And again, that's the thing where Heidi's getting now with the state management thing is that we can use it to our deficit. We can that's compromise right. our existence with these really sharp tools that you and I have. And then what happens is that the, that's where we get the seminar junkies where they're just going and going and going. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. We do it all the time too, going to events always. And are we growing with them? Are we taking something new or are we just being reminded of something that we already knew? Yeah, you can die by the sword that won the battle, man. Yeah. Like, right? So I fell on it right 12 on. times. Right on, yeah. So sometimes we're using our tools. We're in a relationship that's not working, but we listen to the ultimate relationship program 50 times and we're, you know, we're we're still trying we're, we're John Gottmaning our way through this existence. But the reality is your feelings and your relationship are a barometer that it's just time to pull the trigger. I mean, not really pull the trigger, but it's just time to walk, it's time to let it go, it's time to pack it in, call it a day. Um at, at a work situation, you you have all these strategies and skills to learn how to communicate and how to like get your point across and how to negotiate and all this stuff, but it's just the wrong place. I tell this story all the time about um, people who learn how to get stuff done. There's producers that are in the jungle hacking down the brush and they're learning how to make their way through life and get in the brush and hack it all down. And there are managers behind the producers critiquing how they're doing and telling them how to strategize and do better. And there are supervisors behind the managers teaching them more efficiency and better skills. But the leader is the one that climbs the tallest tree in the jungle, looks around and goes, wrong jungle. Like that's sometimes we need to step outside of our skills, step outside of what we know to see the forest through the trees that we're actually hacking away at the wrong brush, man. Right. We're using our skills to stay in something that just isn't right for us anymore. So go NLP on that. Go meta on your meta. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my job. That just happened. Um, so, and I appreciate it. I know people that are on here can, can get that. Roger. And I see Jen's on here. Hi, Jen. I, I, I loved your little, um, flight scare the other day. Her and, her and Tim are really doing some big things. I'm really excited for you guys. Yeah. That's really great. Um, and Steven's here. Hi. And Eric and Preston. Hi. I see Let you me. guys. Well, uh, if you have comments on there at the end, please. Hey, is, is, is that, um, just out of curiosity, is that uh, appropriate stuff? Like when we see that, do people like if, or do you want to be? Oh, do you want to be outed that you're you be watching? Okay. Yeah, or people like. I like to be anonymous like to when I'm watching. In. I watch yeah. a lot of things after because I don't really want people to know I'm watching. I know that's weird. That is weird. Okay, I know that's weird, but that's what I do. All right, so let's talk about for a minute why you might, why we might not be letting things go. Uh, that we know we need to, right? So now if you're like in this place where you recognize there are some things you need to let go of, what are some reasons that maybe you in the past haven't, if you're really honest with yourself, soul searching? Um, so my experience has been not only, I mean, I suppose for myself to some extent, but the the secondary gain from holding on to these experiences are um, very often we get an illusion of love. We get an illusion oh, yeah. of like, exactly. oh my gosh, oh, You're you so poor amazing. thing. Or you had a How problem. You stick it out like yeah. That? And then what happens is that becomes our strategy to get love, to get attention, to get, to, to justify the behavior because there's so many things that can happen in people's lives that the average person would never overcome or continue to use. And then we get that connection. We get that love where it's, you it's went okay. Brilliant right brilliant. away. You went high level brilliant right away. That was Sorry. so awesome and amazing because most people will say, when I say, we say, why do you stick it out? Why do you stay in things that aren't working for you? They'll say something like, cause that's my fear. 
I'm afraid what'll happen when I let it go. Well, right? you're afraid they're going to be alone. Or yeah, like, like they don't want to say that. kind of answers, right? Like I'm afraid, or the devil I know is better than the devil I don't, you know, and that kind of a thing. Or, but or scarcity mentality. There's not enough of of something new, so I'll hang on to what I want, right? Like I can't let this job go because what if it's as good as it gets? But here's the reality. What Doug said is really the high level kind of overview is that there is a secondary gain of, I get a false sense of self-esteem mm -hmm. for being a doormat and, and go, everybody goes, oh shit, man, how do you put up with that? Wow. And how then you get to wear it as a badge of honor. Badge and then it's honor. like, hey, hey here, look at employee of the month, company's going down, but I'm the last one here, cut my pin yeah. and buy, buy in a quarter and what I was making before, but shit, I'm still here. Punch in, Bob. Punch in, Rhonda. You know what I mean? And, and the, I didn't say that name on purpose, but by, by any stretch of measure, I don't think I'm talking to you or anybody else. I'm not. I, I wasn't. Rhonda I don't here. know. No. But but the point is, is that we can do self-sacrificing to our detriment, and we actually think it's to our benefit. Like we're somehow holier than thou, we're a saint, and then we become a martyr. Right. right? There's that illusion that 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 sacrifice. Is, a prize. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, and and it's a tough thing because it is it is it is comfortable for some people where you're just it's familiar and, and that's, that's the, the thing. thing too. You get addicted to the familiarity where we're we're more okay life. with like the you're what we know. You've got genius status happening to well, to, to state. It's a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so the the point being is that when we we get addicted to the familiar. Yes. And there's this element of also, and, and I don't want to make this sound, I'm, I'm not accusing a, a movement or anything. Tony got in a lot of trouble for this. The me too of like, I, now we connected. Oh yeah, me too. I, that That's effed up. Or yeah, I, I'm at this job that sucks too. And well, you know, just another squirrel trying to get a nut or yeah, you know, the man trying to keep us down or whatever. Right. And, and we, we were able to bond over that. And then what happens is, is now, now here's a little, little bit deeper. Like, what if you start demonizing people who are breaking through, who are going out there and starting their own thing, or you justify, well, easy for them and all of that. Now you get to find somebody else to complain with about that person who is just, who just broke through the thing that you wanted to. And that hater, that jealousy comes it's up, all but then now you get all this love again. Cause yeah. you're like, ah, oh, screw that person. And, and all this easy for them to say, yeah. you know, or do, or yeah. whatever. Right. And we all get to stay down here and be comfortable. Right. Right. So, I mean, I think that, yeah, for sure, that familiarity, right, that certainty zone. And I think that for people, you know, I work with people that have come from toxic or dysfunctional backgrounds in particular. And so for people like us, that is, number one, a false sense of self-esteem, a badge of honor, and it's a double whammy of familiarity. Like, I always joke all the time and say, if you're in a shitstorm, you need one of us because we know how to hold the umbrella. We know how to, like, get the mm -hmm. oars and, like, hey, I got to get on the back, Bobby. You know, we, we know how to survive and thrive and cope. But I, I say this a lot, just because you know how to function in toxicity or dysfunction does not mean you should function in toxicity or, you know, or, but, but again, we do because badge of honor, look at me go. It's what I do. consciously doing that, but that's really what we're doing. And, and similarly what Heidi was sharing, sharing earlier about you know, the, having that job and all of that, like going out there and starting your own business. And, you know, I mean, we're entering a new gig economy and so many people are still holding on tight to the, the old way, you know, the, and when we're in the very red ocean of corporate restructuring and, you know, companies that look like they're going to be doing okay. I mean, hell, we, we were part of that. We, you know, we were at a, we worked at a treatment center and, and we're doing amazing work and added tons of value and loved everybody, clients and, and staff alike. And we held on as long as we could and, and we still love them. We still have great relationship, you know, with hopefully you, if you were, uh, met us through there. And at the same time, we knew that it was like we got it. We, we, we got to go. We got to go. We got to do that. And this is normal, right? Like this we're not making anybody wrong for it. So, we just want to help people, you know, do that process to reinvent themselves. That's right. So even in like careers, like we think, careers, oh, we have to know what we want to do for the rest of our lives. Yeah. You have a core competency or a core passion that 
I'm like a serial monogamist. I'm monogamous to something for a while, then I go on and I'm monogamous to the other thing for a while. I mean, TikTok. No, just kidding. So I, but I have a. What were you doing in Pittsburgh? Yeah, eating pierogies. Yes. Huh? Oh, the <laughs> and best in Pittsburgh. Pepperoni rolls. <laughs> Uh, a spicy pepperoni roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. I am, and you are, monogamous on a deeper scale to a bigger picture, mm -hmm. but serial monogamous to, like, little things. So, basically, like, I know in my heart of hearts that I'm a teacher, right? That's what I do. I'm a teacher at my core. I love to teach, and I, it takes many forms. For a while, it was I was a teacher in the weight loss industry. I was a corporate trainer, and I, I would teach people how to lose weight and counsel them and write all the, do all that. But I, like seven years in, I'm sitting in Vancouver writing diet plans in the back of a little office. I'm not teaching. I'm not doing what I love, but it was very lucrative. I was making a lot of money, but I lost my passion. I lost my spirit. I started feeling resentful. I could have got really scared and said, but weight loss is what I know. I'm an expert at weight loss. Like this is my whole, but I had to be willing to release, mm -hmm. let it go. I'm still a teacher, but I move into the next thing to be monogamous too, right? Oh, now I'm going to teach dating and relationships and do that. And then that's not serving me anymore. Now I'm going to teach rehab and teach people how to be um, sober. And now I'm going to teach families. What's the common denominator? I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher, but I'm flexible in what it is that I teach because the passions change. The things change of how you yeah. are a composer. You're well, a creator. It, you're an artist. You who's been with the other day. Oh, I was, I was with actually. Um, uh, I'm sure he's not on. Friend of mine, Ray. Can I have some uh, of your coffee? Yeah, I'm absolutely. So, I wish I had coffee. I, I asked you if you wanted some. I know. I'm That's regretting it. So uh, we we were on. Uh, we we played a bunch of shows together and, and did a bunch of stuff in New York. You know, in, in two different bands. And um, we. Uh, I don't want to out him right now. If you do it another time, maybe we'll we'll do one with him. But uh, he asked me, he said, man, do you, do you still sing? Do you still play? Do you still whatever? You know, do you miss it? Do you still rock? Yeah. And, uh, and it was funny. We were reminiscing. We had some really good times. Um, he's an amazing singer, and, and uh, we'll talk about him another time. But I said to him, I said, no, you know, I do and I don't. But the truth is I'm still helping people create music of their lives, whether it be – entertaining them from the stage as an artist or entertaining and educating them on a, in a format like this or on our seminars. I'm using still music tremendously. We use music, you know, in everything that we do. So it's still the same thing. The, it, the shift is there. The context has shifted, but the, the, the way that we still are adding value is still living in our passion. It's still, it's reinvention, but it's also using the, the core of who we are in that. And that's again, what kind of what we specialize in, even though we all are different people and we all have unique experiences and challenges, we still have the same structure of the way we are enjoying life, wanting to give back. We're still human beings. So let's give a quick tip on how to let something go, right? Because everybody is on a lunch break and wants to like go back to lunch or go back to work, I know, or back to your stuff you're doing. So, or not, and today's well, your Well, if you're spending day. your most valuable asset with us, live or, or not, thank you. Yes, thank you for being here. So what's your best tip on how to, well, we talked about how to like get curious and sit in the misery and know that it's time to pull the trigger. What is your best advice on how to actually like do it? Well, one of the, the first things is I, I ask the question, like, what do I want? Because that's so often, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're in an argument and you forgot what you were arguing about. You just knew you were right. And the, the challenge that we sometimes get is we get addicted to, we get stuck in a pattern of a certain dialogue, a certain focus, a certain everything, and then we forget what it is, why we're doing it in the first place. Like, what is it the ultimate outcome? So for me, one of the things, especially if you and I are in a spirited debate, um, which doesn't happen very often, but when it does, and then it feels like crap, I go, well, wait a minute. Like, I, what do I want? What do like, I want? I, I want to experience love and joy and happiness and bliss and connection and all of that, and this is not getting it whatever I'm doing right now is not working. So I have to let go of whatever strategy I'm, I'm running right now and 
refocus what it is I want to experience and then look at what are my options to create that experience. That's what I do. I like it. I like it. It's good. It's powerful. I, I use that too. What do I really want right now? Especially if we're in a heated debate or something's happening and I'm like, feel like I'm not being understood or whatever it is. Well, what do I really want right now? Well, I just want to be like heard or understood or valued. And nine times out of 10, the trick to that really is giving yourself what you want in the moment and then that not relying on somebody else to so be. So is that what you're doing? You're going, la, 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 I'm not listening. I'm <laughs> just listening like, to myself. If I want compassion or love or tenderness, I need to be willing to give it to myself and then have it emanate out forward from that. I think a lot of the time we're waiting for other people to change, the situation to change at work, that boss to change, that person to change, and we think, well, that's what we need to have happen. But a really good question to ask yourself is if nothing changes here, Right. And if I have to be the one that continually changes, right, changes my state, changes my ideas, changes my if nothing else changes, if this never changes, do I still want it? If it stays the same, because how it's going to be today is how it was yesterday. OK, if it doesn't change, mostly, do I still want it? So I, I, I have advice for letting things go, and this is my best piece of advice, that I think that we are like nature, and everything that we do can be reflected in nature. And so I think of the apple tree, and I think of how an apple tree is a perfect example tree. about how things go. Um, what is, are those the little ones? Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not very tasty. There. So no, let's do delicious apples. Okay. okay, so a big delicious apple tree, right? And it grows up big and strong and grows this delicious yummy fruit. And, and all of a sudden it's like got its fruit hanging on, okay? And you're the piece of fruit. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> and, and it looks at the fruit, and no, this analogy won't be good if I use you. So oh, no. It has fruit, and it's rotten, and it's smelly, and it's gross. This is my crystal ball because I can see the future of people. It is a superpower, man. I don't, I don't need this. This is a representation of the work that I do. It's a metaphor. Come on in. I, I can tell you exactly what's going to happen. So uh, anyway, it has this apple, and it's rotten. And so what does it do? It just simply drops the fruit and we are meant to be we are meant to be like the apple tree we are meant to just drop it right but why don't we like okay if the apple tree were like a human it would go oh shit that looks rotten i mean what do you think is going to happen if i let this go i mean you won't have that I mean, apple well, anymore but if i let this go is there another fruit going to draw its i mean what if nothing else comes back what if i let this go and it's as good as it gets i know it's stinky and disgusting but what if no other fruit comes what if it hits a little kid on the way down and like knocks him in the head and then i get in trouble and then they chop me down because i i like knocked out a kid walking well, by with my app rotten fruit and this may or may not be relevant to your analogy right now, but in your other hand, you don't have a, a, a fruit. You could be missing out on opportunities I right be. there. I like you're it. Focusing I, I'm on smelling this, what you're stepping in. Crappy apple. I'm bagging it's what you're mowing. Yeah. Correct. So if I have this rotten fruit, what is the only thing stopping me from letting it go? Is my attachment to the one apple. of your pillars? One of your pillars. Strategy, state, story. Yes, I'm attached to the story about what will happen when I let it go. Nothing's going to happen when I let it go. It's going to cycle back down into the earth and become what it's meant it's to be. It's actually going to fertilize, fertilize your me. roots. And sometimes when you let go of the shit, that's what needs to happen. You let go mm -hmm. of the shit, it'll refertilize your life, huh? Put that on a meme, okay? Let go of the shit in your life so it can refertilize something more awesome. Somebody please make that a meme. Wait, wait. Write well, it out as a quote. Just fertilize. Just fertilize your life. Let go of the shit so it can be a fertilizer for your life. Okay. Hello. Such genius status. My drop. I don't know. If that's really genius status. That was very good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're just here edifying each other. Yeah. That was Somebody asked a question last week about how do we two very, I have to go back because he asked the question Eric. and I don't know exactly what it was. We'll answer it on the next slide. Yeah. But um, thank you, Tim. He I think you're here. great. Yeah, I think you guys nice. rock. I didn't hey, see so, hey right if you're now. in Florida, Wednesday night, we're speaking together at an event. Well, maybe we'll put the link up. The link up. The link. The link so, up. yeah, this week is really busy. So we have Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday night, we're doing the thing in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, the I love the relationships. On, and we're yeah. talking with somebody else who's so amazing. Her name is uh, Shauna. Shauna. She's unbelievable. She's going to be speaking to, answering questions. Yeah, and then Thursday night, 
uh, I'll be up in Palm Beach Gardens doing a uh, preview event with Bill Tavernese in uh, the Fitzpatrick Real Estate School. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Real Estate School. Mm. Then Friday night uh, with RB Green uh, Solar Company in uh, Davie. We're doing a networking and preview event, which uh, there's a surprise breakthrough for those of you who are attending. Then we're uh, we're gonna relax over the weekend a little bit. And, we're actually and, gonna clean the garage. Uh, <laughs> we say that every weekend. We're doing it this time. Uh -huh. And then I will take pictures. Monday night, uh, we are at Total Wine in Boynton Beach doing a, a preview uh, event. Preview as event. Well. What does that mean? Doug? So a preview event is you're going to just have a taste of some of the stuff that we do. And, and you, you're, if you're here now, you got a, a bit of a preview. Come hang but, with yeah, us. But come, come spend some time. There'll be some gifts, uh, pepperoni rolls. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Um, yeah, Tim, come on down. And uh, love you too, Amber. And we are um, – I think we're – we, we've occupied we're good. We're back on good, track. Good, yeah, yeah we've, we've, we've held you. Oh, and then the 13th. Uh, oh, that, I did want to say earlier, you were doing emotional alchemy. When you bring in, let go, you start allowing these other things. This is how you turn Magic. lead into gold. This is not just about creating gold. It's about making elemental shifts in your being. Let it go. Let it go. That's right. Good afternoon, Gina. So... Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, if you want us to address any other fun was a stuff, Disney that was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> or Jokes. still going to be one. You, you, every time we go, you do... Uh, hey, shh, do... don't tell the secrets. I'm not okay. third doing Elsa. All right. <laughs> All right. We love you. You we are love perfect. You for who you Just are the way and you are. Who you aren't. Indeed. So we will talk to you soon. Bye. All right. God bless.